In this video, I want to ask the question, who is the real goat of jazz saxophone? Now, Charlie Parker is widely regarded to be said goat. However, there's three questions that pretty much every jazz musician, especially every jazz saxophonist, have always asked ourselves about Charlie Parker. What if Charlie Parker was able to stay cleaner, longer, what if Charlie Parker had lived longer? And what if Charlie Parker played tenor? Sonny Stitt is widely regarded to be the closest thing to Charlie Parker on saxophone, aside from being actually Charlie Parker. So it's curious to ask the question, is this what Charlie Parker would have sounded like if he had lived longer, if he had played tenor, if he had stayed cleaner longer? Now, I'm not gonna base this whole video on the problems that Charlie Parker had, but both Parker and Sonny Stitt both suffered from similar types of addictions. So in this video, I wanna take a nice look at who really is the GOAT, considering all the factors involved with how we actually classify someone with being a GOAT. So let's take a look. So we have the originator, Charlie Parker, the innovator of bebop. When you go back and you listen to these recordings, you start to hear something that's unlike anything that came before it. When I listen to Sonny Stitt, I hear a man playing through generations of music. When we get to hear someone like Sonny Stitt, we get to hear not just the stuff from the 1940s and 50s, but the 1960s and the 1970s all these big changes that were happening in music and in culture. How does that influence the playing of someone? And plus, he's also just equally skilled on tenor. When you live longer, when you have that longer time of just playing, you wind up being influenced by other great players that have just come about later on in life. So how do we actually compare someone like Sonny Stitt to a Charlie Parker, or is it even fair? Personally, I like both of these guys and obviously pick up these transcription books. You can go online, YouTube, and you can check out pretty much every solo that's in all of these transcription books. I do have a Amazon affiliate link. I will post the links to these books and you can pick these up if you want. And you should, because these are definitely two that should be in your library of repertoire to have. And you go through and listen to the recordings and follow along and learn it and really understand what it is that these players are doing and what it is that makes them great. And also what it is that separates them two from each other. When I first started listening to Sonny Stitt, I was having a lot of problems differentiating him from Charlie Parker. But as you start to listen more, you start to hear those differences. Now, one of the biggest differences is just the quality of the recording. The recording technology just got better and better by the time you really get to the heart, the meat of what Sonny Stitt was doing. But the actual integrity, the actual quality of the playing is something that should be done very objectively when you're listening to two of your favorite or two of the great, greatest saxophonists ever. In making a case for Sonny Stitt, in this book, you can see that there is a recording of Body and Soul and also Constellation, which there are recordings of Charlie Parker, not just playing Body and Soul, but Charlie Parker actually wrote Constellation as well. So he's covering that song. It's interesting to listen to both of them back to back, but I want to I want to give you guys another one of these goat comparisons. One of which is Mike Tyson versus Muhammad Ali. 
Now, if you think about it, I think a lot of people would pretty much pick, if the both of them were to get into a fight, I think a lot of people would pick Ali to win. However, you got to consider that Mike Tyson's entire professional career, he would have studied every single punch ever thrown that was recorded by Muhammad Ali. So he would know all of his moves and all of his tricks. And when you take a person like Mike Tyson in his prime versus an Ali in his prime, Mike Tyson has this whole other wealth of knowledge on how to fight someone like Ali. Assuming both of them are in their prime and Ali has no idea who Mike Tyson is. I think if it came down to 10 fights between Ali and Mike Tyson, I probably got to go with Mike Tyson winning seven out of three fights, assuming that Ali has no idea who Mike Tyson is. Mike Tyson would have just studied all of Ali's moves, so he would know exactly what kind of fighter he was up against, giving him that type of advantage. Now, this seems like a wildly unfair comparison of the two. If we take that into consideration with a Sonny Stitt versus a Charlie Parker, you can see how it's not really a fair comparison because we have to include what Charlie Parker did to actually create this bebop style. And when you factor that in, innovation pretty much trumps. Innovation pretty much just is the top dog in terms of goatness. Like in my opinion, Charlie Parker just sits atop of that mountain all by himself, man, because he's just a whole nother beast. Even when you compare those recordings back to back and whatnot, you just hear that distinctive kind of Charlie Parker thing that all of us, not just saxophonists, have been trying to emulate. Now, I'm a huge fan of both of them, just like I said, and there is a tragedy between both of them. However, I'm really glad that both of them were able to leave such a successful legacy of music for all of us to enjoy. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I just wanted to bring that up. As I mentioned earlier, I do have an Amazon affiliate link. I will post links for these two books if you want to pick those up and many other things that you can pick up on Amazon. I do have my saxophone altissimo books for alto and tenor, have my all things diminished book and my highly anticipated Saxophone Sound Development book is available for purchase through PayHip. Those are digital downloads. Also have an affiliate link with Woodwind Brasswind. If you're interested in picking up some new saxophones or even new saxophone equipment, we do have the Selmer Supreme Tenor that's finally out. If you're interested in picking that up, I have links for that. Also, if you like this kind of content and you want to see the channel grow, you can buy me a piece of cake. It's just like a Kickstarter, Patreon type of donation program. If you want to help the channel grow, you can buy me a piece of cake. And that helps immensely. <laughs> all right. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. That's all I got for you. See ya.